Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I have a really exciting guest on for you today, and I know so many of you will recognize her name and you will recognize it from maybe many different areas, whether it's one of the books that she's written or her website, or you've heard her on different podcasts, um, but her name is Trisha Goyer, and I am thrilled to have her on. She has an amazing story and a new book coming out. And so Trisha, welcome to the podcast. I'm super excited to have you on with me today. Thank you, Yvette. It's so fun meeting you. This is great that we could just connect in the middle of a busy day. <laughs> yes, yes. Isn't it fun? This is one of the great blessings of the internet because I have lots of friends around the country and, and many of them I have never actually met in person, but I've gotten to meet them face to face over Zoom. Usually yeah. that's how we do our <laughs> interviews. So <laughs> so it's nice to, nice to Zoom meet you. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> is that a thing? We'll make that a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. Now we should like get Zoom meetup t-shirts or something. Right. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> we'll start some kind of club. My girls do that. It's so funny there, especially my nine-year-old. Um, and you have you have lots of kids, so maybe yeah. yours do that too. I do have a nine-year-old always... girl also. <laughs> right. And do, do they always want to start clubs doing things? Like... Oh, they have little groups for this and little groups for that. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that so fun? So as I said, you have 10 kids you've got, and, and a nine-year-old. Tell us about your family. Yep. So um, my husband and I have been married 29 years and we actually met, I had a son already. I was a teen mom, um, but it was during those teen years that I dedicated my life to God after I'm like, this is not working. I am leading myself <laughs> down the wrong path. Um, met and married John after I had Corey. And then we had two more kids. And um, I started writing, I, had, I was a mom of three little kids, started writing books, and he works in computer stuff, computer nerd is what he calls himself, um, and we've homeschooled from the beginning, so our oldest kids are 30, 27, and 25, um, all of them love God, which is awesome, and my oldest two have kids. And then um, we were almost empty nesters. So our youngest was 15 when we started um, thinking about adoption. And he was 16 when we brought home a baby girl. So we adopted her first. She's nine now. Um, and then we heard about foster care and all the needs of kids in foster care. And we adopted two sibling groups. So one group is a, a little boy and a, what, that was two at the time and a little girl that's five. And now they're nine and 12. And then we adopted a sibling group. Um, of four preteen and teen girls. Um, they're see, 15, 16, 16, and 19 now. <laughs> so wow. we got them right in the middle of all the hormones. And, you know, they've just had a lot of hard stuff, a lot of changes there in foster care for about eight years, moved around wow. a lot, a lot of issues. So it's been a huge challenge. But I'm homeschooling them. They had gone to public school until all of a sudden I'm like, we're adopting you and you're going to be homeschooled. <laughs> so could talk wow. about completely changing their world. Um, but they love it. They're like, mom, don't send us back to school. So <laughs> they love being homeschooled. Um, and so we are a busy, noisy family. The girls right before I got on the zoom call with you, they were like singing in the kitchen real loud. I'm like, okay guys, I'm going to be doing a video call. I like that you sing in the kitchen, but just for the next hour, <laughs> you just need to chill it a little bit. So they are very loud and it's a very busy home. Oh, it's so fun. I, I thrive on that. I love people and I love kids and I love uh, when I go to friends' houses. I, I have two kids, um, but our house is kind of quiet for the most part. Um, but when I go to friends' houses who have big families, it's always so much fun to me because there's just so much energy and, and excitement and there's always something happening and there's always somebody to play with and there's just there, there's never a dull moment. <laughs> there is never a dull moment. And I'm an introvert. I love quiet. So I usually wake up early, just have some time. And even like in the middle of homeschooling, I'm like, I need a 10 minute break and I'll just go and lay on my bed and just like get quiet for 10 oh. minutes. I'll even put a timer on my phone. Like I just need some quiet for 10 minutes and then we'll be good to go again. Wow. So. Wow. That, that's neat. That's neat to hear that you're an introvert. Um, who has really put yourself out there mm -hmm. and just opened up your heart and your home uh, to, to kids who were in need of a loving family. And that's, that's amazing. And so you have written just a few books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot even wrap my mind around it. You've written over 70 books. Well, that is yeah. just an, incredible. I mean, that, that can only be, and, and I haven't heard you say this, but I'm sure you would say this, that could only be through the, power and strength of the Holy Spirit because oh, absolutely. I don't know 100%. how any human can yeah. possibly do that. Um, 
that is amazing. Uh, you know, as I've looked through your website, it's so neat to see just the different things that, that you tackle on there. I mean, you mm -hmm. have books on parenting, adoption, marriage, um, writing. I know that you do writing workshops and things like that. Social yeah. media, teen moms, homeschool, uh, faith, healthy living. I mean, you've got so many Amish. You've got so many different things. And uh, the first book that I really was introduced um, to that you had written was with Christy Clover and it was, it's mm -hmm. called homeschool basics, how to get started and how to get started, keep motivated and bring out the best in your kids. And, um, Christy sent that to me a while back and it's a fantastic book. Um, but you have a new book that is coming out tomorrow and it is called the grumble free year. And I, I love the subtitle of this one. The book's called the grumble free year, 12 months, 11 family members and one impossible goal. And I've started reading this book and I'm loving it. I told you before we jumped on the podcast, I said, I often don't get to read books all the way through before getting to interview someone about their book. And this one, I've been racing through it, trying to get, get to the end and I haven't made it to the end. So you're going to have to tell me the end of it because it's such a fantastic book. And, and I want to start with one of the verses that you have in here, which of course is the verse that it's really based off of is Philippians 2.14. It says, do everything without grumbling or arguing. And I could imagine that in a, in a home like yours, that could get unbelievably overwhelming to have mm -hmm. constant grumbling and constant arguing. Because I know for us, we're a family of four, you know, we've got two kids and for us, it can become overwhelming when we, and it's not just my kids, it's my husband, myself, you know, all of us, we have, especially if you just are in one of those moods mm -hmm. where just everything just irritates you, everything seems wrong. And so I, I can imagine that with a family the size of yours, it would just completely overtake everything in the home and it can make your home to where it becomes a very um, discouraging place to be. Yeah. So, so tell us, tell us about this. Tell us your story. What, how did this get started? And tell us about this, this book, this Grumble Free Yearbook. Yeah, well, we started because, um, like you said, there's just a lot of grumbling. And after adopting kids, like we adopted them completely out of birth order and then adopted sibling groups. And so even the sibling groups hadn't lived together. And so all of a sudden, oh, wow. they're because there's different places, um, one was at a completely like three hours away from the other three, and those were in different homes at a children's home. So not only are we introducing them to all of us in our busy home, but we're introducing like the siblings are coming back together. So just a lot of challenges at the beginning. We dealt with like a lot of anger and dealing with mm -hmm. past trauma and trauma therapy. And after about a year and a half, we're like, okay, we're, we're doing so much better. There's not a whole huge amount of angry outbursts and everyone's, you know, used to living together and getting along. But then we noticed my husband and I just this grumbling. Just every time I tell someone you need to go do your tour, they'd complain about it, or I don't want to do it, or how come I have to do it today? <laughs> you know, just all the things. And it gets to be where when you do have that many people, so it's my husband and I, and at the time we wrote the book, there's eight kids um, in the house. And then my grandma lives with us too. So she was 87, I think, when we were going through this year. Wow. She just turned 90. And so there's a lot of people complaining and grumbling and arguing and just gets like the whole house gets down and then people are mad at each other and mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. And so my husband and I are like, we really just need to do something. And we had gone on a road trip from, I know you like to do road trips. Yep. We got from Little Rock to Seattle and um, I was speaking up there. So I'm like, Hey, can I just bring my family? Cause I'd never been, most of them hadn't been out of Arkansas, but they had definitely hadn't been to the Northwest. But by the time we were just in the car, it's like, she's touching me. She's looking at me. <laughs> we're like, okay, we just need to do something. And we, John and I had been talking about this for a while, but we knew we needed to like make it be a year. And then we needed to make it like have a reward at the end. Otherwise we're just going to give up like after a week. Like if we just said, we're going to try this, we're going to try this for a week, nothing's going to change. And so we, we, pick the gear. And then we said, we'll take you on like a cruise or a family vacation, something fun if you work on it. And that was enough that the kids were like, okay, what do we need to do? Cause you know, if it had just been like, this is what we're going to do. I mean, they would just grumbled about it. And some were like, there's no way this is going to work. But I think overall, um, because like we made it a challenge, we're all going to work on this together. And we even said, you know, dad and I are grumble just as much as you guys. Like, it's not just you guys, it's all of us. And we talked about, you know, the Israelites, we, we read um, in the book of Numbers, the Israelites just grumbled and grumbled and grumbled and grumbled. And they didn't enter the promised land because of their grumbling. Like, it's a big right. deal to God. Yeah. It's a huge deal. So we just wanted them to know 
this is serious. We need to work on it, but we're all, all going to work on it together. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing, um, <laughs> it's an amazing idea. And to think that you actually put that out in front of your kids and said, let's try to do this. What, what was there? I mean, I know you said some of them were like, oh, I'm not sure. How did they all end up responding to this? And then how did this whole idea unfold? Now, I want to read really quickly because I, I mean, like I told you, as I was reading this book, I'm just highlighting all kinds of stuff and making <laughs> notes and stuff, which I don't always do. Um, but one of the things you said in here, it says, um, grumbling is something we do by default. So unless we're intentional about uprooting this in our hearts, it'll tend to stay put and keep growing. Everywhere we look, there are messages about needing more or better things. And I think, you know, in our society, we always feel like we need more, we need bigger, we need better. Um, and so it is something that we just do by default. And you, you see it everywhere you go. You see it on TV, you see it in movies. It's just kind of part of who we are as humans. And so when you presented this to your family, what was their their actual response? Were they like, yay, let's do it. We're going to get a cruise. Or were they like, <laughs> yeah, no, this isn't going to happen. Well, when we first mentioned it, we like, some kids are like, yes. Like the, so the little kids were more like, this is going to be fun. Yes. Let's do this. Um, they, I think they were just thinking it's going to be fun. The middle kids were like, no, there's no way this is going to work. <laughs> the older two. So then I think she, she was like 18. And then we had like a 22 year old at the time. They're like, uh, we'll see how this goes. Like they're more realistic. And so I think the older they were, the more they were like knowing, understanding that it is going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but it is, it really is. It goes down to our heart issues. It goes down to, and, and really what we were saying is like, all of us have heart problems that we need to kind of do surgery on. Um, but they were, when we mentioned like, we'll take you on a cruise, which I mean, we, we, it's like, we're talking, you know, cheap five people in a room <laughs> going right. to little we don't it's not like an expensive Disney cruise but we wanted them to have something to look forward to and I think that really helped that um yes we're going to work on this and so we have something to do it so when we sat down to memorize scripture verses they all knew like we were working on this we had an end goal mm -hmm. we knew what the plan was so it wasn't just like let's try it and then it didn't work and let's give up um, so every time I would sit down with the scripture or we would read different Bible passages or we talked about different things, they knew it was a goal. And I think that ultimately helped us so that they were will willing to work on it. Right. Well, you, you talk in the book about how you had to start first with yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, why, why, why did you have to start with yourself first? Why not just start the whole family? Like, let's just jump <laughs> into this and see how it goes. Yeah. Well, first of all, because I realized how much I grumble and mm -hmm. it's easy even to say, we need to do this because my kids are driving me crazy. Well, that's grumbling. <laughs> like, right. cause it is me. <laughs> and, and plus we've added seven people to our house, um, in, you know, five years time. And so it was all the shoes, all the mess, all mm -hmm. the noise that I just found myself grumbling. It's so really had to look back on why I grumble like I do. So even growing up, um, it wasn't like my mom or stepdad or grandparents were like out loud complainers. It was more like, oh, I wish we had that. It would be nice if we could go on vacation. Oh, I would like if I could have money to buy new shoes. It was like the underlying thing. And I, I realized like I do that a lot. It was almost like the martyr thing. I'm really good at like, I wish someone was in here helping me cook dinner. It must be nice to just be sitting there <laughs> on YouTube instead of me saying, hey, get up put that away. Come and help me. You know, it's just like me feeling the martyr. Cause that's what I had learned. And so right. it really looked at my heart and even times in my past, I realized like when I'm discontent, it could just bring in all kinds of struggles in my marriage and my parenting. Cause I am from that place of discontentment. So really it was like me sitting down with God because before I could lead my kids, before John and I could lead our kids, we really needed to like get a control on our own grumbling first. Yeah. One of the things that really struck me um, about this is that you talk about how your childhood and your upbringing and John's upbringing really affected the way that you respond to things as adults. Mm -hmm. And and I love that you have taken this and, and you're really training your whole family, including yourselves, to be grateful, to be thankful mm -hmm. for all the things that we have and not to grumble about how we think things should be. Right. Um, because your, your kids now growing up in your home, they're going to enter into their own adult lives mm -hmm. and they're going to have their families. And what a blessing that they will get to take this with them into their homes and yeah. then, you know, teach their families. This is how we're grateful for the things that, that the Lord has given to us. Mm -hmm. So when did you actually start this challenge with your family? 
Um, we started it so the beginning of school year 2016. It's when we actually okay. started the challenge. And it was like the first day of school. This is the first thing we're doing. We're doing Bible study and we're going to talk about grumbling. And I remember that first day we, we um, did Philippians 2.14, do okay. everything without um, grumbling or arguing. And that was the very first verse we wrote we memorized and we talked about like what is grumbling because we you know i looked it up it means um it comes from a french word that means to mutter between your teeth and i said but it's just not that it's rolling your eyes it's mm -hmm. slamming the cabinet door when you're supposed to be doing the dish you know, unloading the dishwasher and so then the kids it, this was totally unexpected they started well i do this well i do this and when you know i mutter i complain i whine and all the kids i'm like well let's write this down and so we did we got a big whiteboard and we just started writing down all our grumbling styles. And I thought it would be like, don't look at me. Don't, don't talk about me. Let's talk about you. But every one of them was able to acknowledge the ways that they grumble. Um, and so that really helped us get started. So we could see like, mom, they're like, mom, you gripe. Like you gripe at us about picking <laughs> up our shoes. And I'm like, you're right. And you know, the littlest one's like, I whine. I whine when I want something or when things aren't going my way. And so through the day, it kind of they caught themselves as they noticed when they were doing it and it wasn't like anyone was saying you're doing it but they would start looking at themselves and I think that really helped us from the beginning that they were you know kind of realizing their own grumble styles instead of just pointing at each other because if we just kept pointing at each other all day it would have just been grumbling about everybody's grumbling and that, right. <laughs> that defeats the whole purpose <laughs> yes exactly wow so so was it hard in the beginning to then train yourselves because I would imagine and, and this is, it's so funny as I'm reading through the book and talking with you, I'm like, okay, I really want my family to do this, but I, I don't even know quite how to approach my family about mm -hmm. this. Um, it, and partly I would say like you, you know, you talked about starting with you. Is that for me? Well, that means I have to stop grumbling, mm -hmm. but how do you differentiate between, especially as a mom, between grumbling about something and, and raising up your children because you know if, if they're leaving their shoes out all over the place or not putting their dirty laundry in the hamper or leaving toothpaste in the sink or whatever it is as moms we can't just let that stuff go right. you know we have to train them we have to you know teach them like this is how you how you keep a clean and tidy home this is how you you know do your schoolwork this is how you do these things in life so how do you separate grumbling from raising our kids yeah that's really good so i realized like what i was doing especially certain times like when we're tired or it's been a long week like fridays for me was the grumbliest day because we've been homeschooling all week there's usually like books laying everywhere um and then on thursday nights i volunteered a teen mom support group so i'm gone that evening i don't come in till like nine o'clock and half the kids are in bed and then i fall into bed and so by the time i wake up friday morning there's a mess usually from dinner the night before because I wasn't there or um, the house is a mess. And I just remember just being overwhelmed and grumbling. And then everyone's like, oh, no, mom's mad. Let's really jump and get the house clean, which I guess it gave me the result. The house was clean, but it's yeah. not, you know, everyone ran to pick up their stuff, but it wasn't in a peaceful way. Like by the mm -hmm. time we sat down to do our Bible study and do school, like no one was in a good mood. And so one, I actually worked with um, a life coach who's become a good friend of me. And she talks about like, if there's something that's the same habit over and over and over that you find yourself in, instead of like letting yourself get in that grumbling, it's almost like work down with the same, the same thoughts, the same grumbles. She says, find a solution for it. And mm -hmm. so she actually like had me write, write down things that we were struggling with. And then for each one, like write one simple solution. So the first thing that was on my list was the house is messy. I mean, there's 11 people now, the house is messy. And my first thing is like, I need to do a chore chart and a system that'll work. Cause you know, we'd have like Monday's this, Tuesday's this. And by the time we get to Wednesday, everyone forgot what they're supposed to be doing. And so <laughs> I spent like 20 minutes and actually like wrote down a rotating system um, with the three oldest. And then with the three youngest of like one does the kitchen, one does the bathroom and one does the living room. And then what they have to do, like what it means to do those things, like, you know, um, wipe down the counters, load the dishwasher, wipe out the sink, sweep. So they knew exactly what to do. And it said exactly what day they were going to do it. So um, they would rotate through those things. And then they would also rotate through dinner chores at night. So one would um, put the food away, one would load the dishwasher, and one would do the big dishes and wipe down the counters. I, it probably took me two or 20 minutes to organize that. The same paper that we I laminated stuck on the wall in the by the pantry. We've been doing it for it's been three years now. It oh worked. wow! It took me two minutes instead of me just like 
who was supposed to do dishes or someone, you know, whatever. We didn't have a system and just finding a system. I haven't been having to grumble because I'm like, okay, it's Monday. I know exactly who's doing the dishes. And they're like, I know I'm on it. I'm just going to finish this book up I'm reading and chapter I'm reading and I'll be right there. So it's like, we all know the system. We all have a plan and it works so much better. And I think so many times we get stuck in that complaining where we don't take the time to figure out what will solve this? What can be a solution to right. this? Um, and that really is it. Then it takes training. So um, it takes, you know, showing our kids how to do a good job, showing them how to follow through. And then they feel better about it because they don't have a mom who's on them all the time, grumbling and complaining. Um, and that led to the next thing, which is praising them when they were even doing a quarter of it right, like praise the quarter yeah. that they were doing a really good job in. And then I realized like the more I praised, the more they wanted to do a good job on their chores or whatever they were doing instead of me again, just grumbling about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. Um, and then we'll come back and keep on talking about grumbling. So I, I love the idea of just having an organized, um, some, some kind of system in place mm -hmm. because it really does help. We actually started doing that this year with our girls and I, I did a, I've made lists for them many times, um, but usually I may make it way more complicated. You said you took about 20 minutes to make it. I usually take like three hours <laughs> because <laughs> I like to make everything pretty and I color code it and I put it in Excel and, and then, you know, the next day I'm like, okay, this did not work out the way it was supposed to work out. Um, but this year I was like, okay, even in the morning, I, every morning it seemed like I was like, okay, you girls need to do this, 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 and this. And then the next day you need to do this, 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 and this. And at bedtime, same thing. And I was like, why am I doing this? Why not just make a list? And my girls, like most people, they thrive on checklists. They yeah. love to, they, they literally love to just check them off. And so they have it on a, you know, dry erase or wet erase um, thing. Um, sleeve so they can actually check it off every day and they get that satisfaction of putting that check mark next to it. Um, so that has been a huge benefit um, for us just getting our mornings and evenings to where it's not constant nagging all mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. um, you, you also in the book, you talk about just how seriously God takes grumbling. And again, we read, you know, um, at the beginning of the podcast, we read Philippians 2.14, do everything without grumbling or arguing. Uh, but God has a whole lot to say about grumbling. How do you go about teaching your children? Because it, again, it's a, it's a heart issue. It's not just an issue of action and behavior. Mm -hmm. It's an issue of the heart. And so even if they're going about doing their things that they're supposed to be doing and they're not outwardly grumbling, the whole point is to teach them not to grumble at all, even inwardly. Yeah. And so how do you go about teaching your kids and your family? I shouldn't even say your kids, because this was really a family thing that you did, including your 80 nine-year-old grandma or 87-year-old <laughs> grandma at the time. Um, how did you guys go about teaching your whole family to be grateful and not to grumble even inwardly? Yeah. Well, we actually read through the book of Exodus and the book of Numbers. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, so, through our homes, and they're like, you know, we're halfway through Numbers. They're like, I am so tired of these people <laughs> grumbling. So it really made a difference. Like just saying like, yeah, this is, and then turning it back. Like this is us. This is yeah. what we sound like. This is what we deal like. Like, look what God did for them. And he, you know, he freed them from slavery. He, um, the Egyptians showed favor upon them when they left. They left with gold. I mean, and then they're grumbling. And I think so many times we, I would pause and like, what about our life? Like, what has God done? Like, we have a house. We're all together. Yeah. It's warm. We have, you know, all the things that God has done for us. And then we're grumbling. So really going back you know, just to scripture. I mean, just even today we were reading about um, Daniel and we were reading about um, Belshazzar and, you know, he had the, the hand on the wall was the one we were studying today and just talking about like Daniel had to face some tough stuff. Like yeah. he had to deal with all these kings, he had to be de deal with being taken as a teenager to Babylon from Judah. Um, but we could see how God used him over and over again to impact kingdoms, like mm -hmm. a big thing. And the hard stuff we're facing, like we don't even know what God is doing in the bigger picture. Like you mm -hmm. guys, it was not fair that you guys were in foster care. Like that really stinks. Um, but you don't know how God's going to use your life. And instead of grumbling about things that are hard, like we could see that God has a bigger plan. So I think anytime we're reading the Bible, um, going back to God's word, just like pull those things out and make it reality because it's so easy 
like to, to say, you know, to say, oh, this is that person, but what about us? Like I'll say, like yeah. when I talked about Daniel not wanting to eat the king's food, um, like that was a big deal. It'd be like us going and we're at the house of the Kardashians and they're putting <laughs> out the party and we're like, oh yeah, I don't want to, this is, I can't do this. Like, right. And that, that's a big deal. And so getting them kind of in their terms, I just like want to show them that the people in the Bible it really applies to us too. And then also we talked about the Holy spirit and how, you know, and and this was like months and I realized like they're struggling we're trying it. Some, there's some months I'm like, I don't even know if we changed at all. And then realizing like, Oh, we haven't been talking about the Holy spirit. Like God is there to help us Mm -hmm. have joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, all these things. And we are not using that. We are just trying to do it in our own strength. So again, then going back to like God requires this. And this is a big requirement. Like many times it's do not grumbling or, you know, show hospitality and do not grumble. There's lots of different verses, but he also says, and I have given you a helper in the Holy spirit. So it's just getting into the word. And I think so many times we think like, I need to come up with all the smart tricks or do list or do stuff activities for my kids to do. And it's like, okay, God's word. Yeah. It's already there. (laughs) We just need to like pull it out and apply it. Yes, yes. It's so much about perspective and, and so much of life is about perspective and mm-hmm. how you see things and how you choose to see them. You know, you can choose to have joy in the midst of your circumstances. Yeah. Um, and then I love that you talk about the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit when, um, I think I've probably shared this before, but when Brooklyn, my oldest, when she was probably about five, um, we were just, you know, she was dealing with your typical five-year-old tantrums and things like that. And um, I had gone to a friend's house one day and so we were, she had some sort of tantrum while we were there. And my friend who had kids, you know, who were several years older than mine, she said, you know, when you discipline her, when you, when you pray with her, she said, always pray with her that the Holy Spirit would help her to obey mm-hmm. and help her to understand that she cannot do this without his help. Mm-hmm. And so we've done that. And it's such a beautiful thing because I want my kids to grow up knowing that you, you can't succeed in this area right. of your life without the help of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. but that's what he's here for. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's here because he wants to help guide us and direct us. And then at, it was around that same time that we learned the fruit of the spirit song. Do you, yeah. do you guys know? The love, <laughs> the, joy, the, peace, yeah. Right, right, right. The fruit of the spirit is not a coconut. Yep. <laughs> I'll actually link to that song because if yeah. people don't know that song, I apologize in advance because it will get stuck in your head and you will be singing it for (laughs) weeks on end. But it was such a great song to learn because, you know, I I knew the fruit of the spirit, but it was a fun way to teach it to my kids. And so at the ages of, you know, well, since they were teeny tiny, um, we learned this silly song, but in the song it says, you know, but the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And there have been numerous times where we're going through some kind of, you know, um, just issue with, with our girls and we're just talking them through it and we'll say, okay, what is the fruit of the spirit? Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, love, joy, peace, patience, (laughs) kindness, goodness, you know, um, but they know it. And so it's, it is a beautiful way. And I Mm -hmm. love that you've incorporated that into this because again, it's not just an issue of, of behavior. It's an Mm -hmm. issue of their heart and, um, praise God that we have the Holy spirit to come alongside us. Yeah. And, and help us with this. Cause we cannot do it on our own yeah. power. I mean, <laughs> you know, as humans, we just want to complain and grumble about everything. So, um, and, and, you know, we, we don't get it right. The first time and we don't get it right. I, I won't say we won't get it right ever. There's never going to be a time where we've perfected this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so how, how has your family gone about forgiveness and building those relationships with one another in the midst of hurt and, and the trial of grumbling and complaining. Yeah, that is really good. So, you know, and like, like how you said, this isn't something like we're never going to be perfect at it. Mm -hmm. Um, there'll be sometimes where they'll be grumbling about something like, guys, I'm like doing interviews about this book. So you guys can't grumble like teasing them. (laughs) So it's stuff like, and we are so much better. I will just say Mm -hmm. that now we are so much better than we used to be, but they're still grumbling. They're still complaining. They're still argument arguments. And then understanding that we're all human. And I love how you brought out forgiveness because there was times that I would be grumbling and complaining and like having a bad morning. And then if I'm in a bad mood, everyone's in a bad mood. And I just have to sit down with them and say, guys, I am so sorry. You need, can you forgive me for really having a bad attitude this morning? 
Um, and every single time they've all said yes. I mean, some of them it might take them a little while to come around, but I've noticed like the more I modeled seeking their forgiveness mm-hmm. and telling them I messed up big time. That was not how I should have acted. I shouldn't have treated you that way. Um, I've seen them doing it with each other. And, you know, they'll say someone will say something mean or grumble about someone and then feelings will get hurt. And I'll see them like going around saying, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? I shouldn't have talked to you. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. But it came from me starting me modeling that, that, and then them picking up on it. And it really is like, once we seek that forgiveness, like everyone's attitude is just so much better. It's like, okay. That was really hard, but we got through it. Let's, you know, let's move on. And that has been huge in our lives. Yeah. It's, um, forgiveness is hard sometimes, especially when I know with our family, sometimes, you know, somebody will say something that will offend another and we do the whole, you know, just, I'm sorry, will you please forgive me? Yeah. (laughs) And you just kind of spit it out. Um, but even in doing that, um, just the act of asking for forgiveness, Mm -hmm. even if it's not very heartfelt in the beginning, it really does start to bring healing. And, and sometimes, you know, of course we have to go a little bit further and be like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't think you actually were very sorry. Yeah. I think you're wanting to just move on with your day. Um, but it really is, like you said, it, you know, um, it's important for us as parents to model that for mm-hmm. our kids when, when we're doing the very thing that we're telling them not to do. I find myself doing that a lot with self-control. You know, I'm always talking to my kids about self-control and then I'll go off and do something, you know, where I'm not using the self-control that I'm asking them to use. Right. Um, and so that for me is sometimes when I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. I actually, <laughs> confession time. I did that with my <laughs> daughter the other day. She, she got a bag of candy for her birthday and it was really good candy. <laughs> and I just, one night, I don't know, I was having a major sweet tooth. And so I'd eaten some of her candy and she hadn't said that I couldn't eat it, but I really was just craving this sugar that night. And so the next day she came back and she's like, what happened to all my candy? <laughs> And I was like, oh, honey, mommy's so sorry. I was not using self-control last night. Mm-hmm. I really, I really blew it. And so I said, I need to buy you a new, bo- a new bag of candy. Um, you know, and it's such a, such a silly thing, it seems. But here I am asking her to use self-control mm-hmm. and not have too much candy. And then I go and yeah. eat half the bag. Yeah. Um, and I can justify it all I want. But in reality, I just wasn't using the self-control that I needed. So um, Anyway, yes, it, it is good to ask forgiveness. It is good to be quick to forgive mm-hmm. as God's word says. And as mm-hmm. you said, it all comes back to what does God's word say about this? He tells us these things in his word. Yeah. He gives us guidance and direction. And he tells us how to live a life of peace and joy and happiness. And it's not that we're going to live a life of ease because it's never going to be easy to live in this world, but Mm -hmm. we can certainly have a whole lot more peace in our family. And I think that you've really um, nailed it with this book and and helping families to realize how we can have a more peaceful home um, because a lot of it really does come back to the root of being ungrateful. Yeah. And grumbling. So, so the book again is called the grumble free year, 12 months, 11 family members and one impossible goal. So tell us really quickly, we have just a minute left. How did it end? How did they, well, and did you go an entire year? We, we did. We followed through the, with the year and every okay. month I could see growth. I could see change. There's a story, a build a bear story that you'll have to read that talks about, there was a moment where we could have just crumbled into a grumbling mess and they, we pulled it together. Like we changed your attitude. So I definitely see it, saw um, change at the end, but when we were on the cruise, we were passing out bracelets that said grumble free. I can do all things through him. So they were able to mm. share what they did and what they were working on, which is a, a reward in itself to go up to people like, here's a free bracelet. And they'd say, what's this, what is this for? And they were able to say that we worked on this. And one guy's like, can I have some extra to take home to my kids? Oh, wow. I would have, I would have brought them on this cruise, but they grumbled too much. So I left them home. <laughs> so it just was a way for my kids to see like, this is a reward. First of all, the cruise was a reward, but then it, being able to share the message with other people yeah. was a reward too. So, I mean, we're not perfect, but I would say overall, our attitudes are better. There's a lot more peace in our home. Um, there's not the constant grumbling than there used to be. So it was so worth it. It was hard. <laughs> it was hard. It was challenging. There's so much, I didn't know if we were going to change it all, but it was worth it in the end. And have you continued on with the challenge or was it like, okay, challenge over, we're done. No, we we're took our cruise, much like, let's grumble again. <laughs> no, it's pretty much like, this is like the way of life. Like we yeah, worked good. on it. It's our one year of trying it. 
And, you know, and when I say, well, I'll even say like, is that grumbling? Or I'll, if I catch myself, oh man, I was grumbling. Like we all know, we, we've all been mm-hmm. working on it. So we've always, always have this like common thing. Yeah. Where I could just say, is that grumbling? And they, I don't have to give the huge lecture. Like they've heard all the stories. They've heard all the, you know, they learned the scripture verse and it has really just made it like, this is how we want to live our life now. We're not going to go back to the old way. No one wants to go back to the old way that we were. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I love it so much. Um, We are done with the podcast right now. Would you mind staying on with me for a few more minutes um, for Backstage Past Members? I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about um, family and you, you bringing these children into your home and how you've built those relationships with them and then them with you and your husband. Um, Because I know that this really has tied into the relationship that you have with them today. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about, more about some, some homeschooling things. You've got um, this, the book Homeschool Basics that you wrote with Christy Clover. And um, so are you good to stand for a few yeah, more minutes? Perfect. Okay, yeah. great. Well, yeah. thank you guys for listening. If you're a Backstage Pass member, um, stick with us on um, the Backstage Pass membership site. If you are not a Backstage Pass member, you can check us out at schoolhouserocked.com. And you can watch this whole interview on video. Um, and then you can watch uh, the the bonus content that we have as well. So, um, and you guys keep praying for us. We, God is just doing amazing things still through Schoolhouse Rocked and the ministry that we have here. And as we're working on post-production on the movie, but we definitely need lots of prayer as um, we continue to move forward with that and get this movie done. So thank you, um, Trisha. People can find you at trishagoyer.com. Yep. Correct. And this book yes. releases tomorrow, which Yay. is November 5th, tomorrow, November 5th, um, tomorrow. So you guys can go on. What's the best place to get it? Um, well, if you go to the grumblefreeyear.com, it has links to all the places to get it or even local right. bookstores like Barnes and Noble should have it too. Okay, great. You guys are definitely going to want to get this book. It has literally um, been life-changing already for me in my perspective of grumbling and being grateful. So um, pick it up and go to her website, check it out and check out her website, uh, trishagoyer.com, where she's got a million different resources and all of her other books that she's written. So uh, Trisha, thank you so much for your time. uh, Thank you for having me. Yes. And thank you guys for listening. We will see you back here next week. Thank you guys for sticking with us. Um, I love our Backstage Pass members and I'm so grateful for you guys and the time that you take to watch our videos and um, just listen to this bonus content. And so it's always fun to continue on these conversations with our guests. And Trisha, you've been so fun to talk to. Um, I wanted to read a a page from your book and this is, uh, I don't know what chapter this one is. That's chapter three. Um, It's on page 32 and it says, and I've got it highlighted with a big star next to it. (laughs) And it says, just striving, I'm sorry, not striving, just surviving wasn't good enough and settling wasn't good enough either. We wanted our kids to thrive. We wanted them to be loving, caring, giving, and thankful adults who didn't grumble through life, but instead became their best selves, who God uniquely created them to be so they could impact uh, the world for his glory. And I, I felt like that right there really sums up this whole mm-hmm. book. I mean, it's just such a beautiful way. Just that's what we're doing as parents. We want our kids to grow up, to serve God and to impact his kingdom mm-hmm. and to be loving and to be caring and to, to love and care for their families, but also to go beyond that and to love and care for others. And if we're constantly complaining and angry and grumbling about all of the things in life that are going wrong, we can't be as impactful as, as we could be if we're just grateful for what God has done. And so I'm so thankful for this book. Um, and so thankful for what you've done with your family, because you've been able to take these children out of the foster system. You've got your own kids, um, you know, who you've raised and, and you're doing an amazing thing and just raising these kids to love Jesus. And you're showing them firsthand the love of Jesus. How has that been with your family? I, I would love just kind of a little bit of it an inside view of the Goyer household, um, because I know it's not been easy. You've had a lot of challenges. They've had a lot of challenges. How have you gone about, and I shouldn't say how have you as if it's already done. How are you and your husband working to build those relationships within your family um, in in light of being grateful for what God has done um, with all of you? That's really good. So, you know, with our first three, I think you're just kind of going through the motions. You know, we went to church. We, we really focus on church service because we knew 
um, that if they're serving and if they're connected and in their church, that they're more likely to stick around and stay um, connected, which is, has been a huge thing. Um, one of our daughters is a missionary and um, one's a children's pastor. And then he also has another job in insurance. And then our son, our 25 year old college student son even comes and serves in church. So that has been important. And so, you know, we do have like family dinners and we have you know, bike rides and we try to connect in those ways, but really having time to serve together. So we all serve together on Sunday mornings in our children's church. Um, even our girl, our teenagers, you know, we dress up in Bible costumes and that has really like made kind of like, this is who we are. We serve, we teach kids about the Bible and that has been really important. And then um, homeschooling has been huge because they had been in public school. And actually the first six months when we had the four older girls, so we had one in elementary, two in junior high and one in high school. We, when they were still in foster care, they had to be in public school. Um, and that was just right. a challenge because they're gone all day and then they come home and then they have chores and homework. And then we're just arguing about the chores and the homework. Mm -hmm. It was like no time to really bond because um, they were, they were gone all day. And there was yeah. a lot of conflict trying to just get them to get their stuff done. And then they didn't even understand homeschool, you know, like this, right. the concept <laughs> of it, they looked at the books and I'm like, okay, but how does this work? And I remember the first day we sat down and we started with Bible study and they're like, what? like, this is stupid. Like we need math and we need to learn how to write essays. And why do we do this? And I said, this is more important than anything mm -hmm. that you will do. And so just spending time in God's word and first, I mean, they're literally like sitting there like, oh, this is so dumb. <laughs> um, but the more we read, they were like, that's in the Bible or I didn't know that. And, and they had gone like different foster homes and children's homes. They gone to church, but it was just different, you know, just mm -hmm. us around the table. And then um, with homeschooling, I did a lot of different curriculums. I mean, I've probably tried everything under the sun. <laughs> um, but with these kids, I've done a lot more reading out loud okay. because they didn't have those years of sitting on my lap, yeah. you know, doing the board books, cuddling together. And even when we first started homeschooling, our oldest that we adopted was a sophomore. And I'm like, yeah, we're all going to sit around the table. I'm going to read these YWAM missionary stories and we're going to read these books together. And they did because they just thought that's what they're supposed to do for homeschool. But I really wanted that time. Like we're all together. We're all yep. sharing this story together. They're hearing my voice um, because we'd missed out on so many years. So really, we really have, my husband and I have talked about like, how can we connect with them? How can we, um, you know, make sure we have time with them in the evenings? We have different routines. So I'll do a, a bedtime routine with the three little kids who all share a room and I read out loud to them. And my husband will put on like a mystery show, like monk or some kind of those mysteries and they'll get ice cream and they'll watch a show. So, and then usually they end up talking for the next, you know, after the show's done for 30 to 45 minutes before we're like, okay, you really need to go to bed right. now. <laughs> but these routines, these schedules, spending time together is something we've just had to develop and figure out what will help us connect with them, what will work for us. Cause we don't want just like all these kids in their room on devices mm -hmm. um, and then until right. they turn 18 and then they're gone. Like this right. is, we have such a short window of time with them. We really want to use it to the best of our ability. Yeah. Have you found that the, the sibling sets have connected better with each other or have they all just kind of found their own sibling to connect with uh, yeah, that's now that question. you're all one family? Yeah. So when they first moved in, especially the, the older girls were like, this is our sibling group. And mm -hmm. like, I'm only getting, I'm only getting Christmas presents for my bio family and oh, wow. you know and so yeah. it was um and plus they I mean they had to fight so much just to be together that yeah because they were separated and stuff so I could I can understand that and that's what they were used to but definitely over time like they're all siblings and they all drive each other crazy and they all love each other <laughs> like, yeah you, know, you can see and different ones will pair up and spend time together um where we are all just intermeshed like I wouldn't say like it's only these people that hang out and only these people you'll see, you know, 16 year old with a nine year old watching a movie together or, you know, different people doing painting together. I mean, they are much more meshed together now. And mm -hmm. I, I definitely think like homeschooling and that time together yeah. has just made a big difference or I'm cooking, I'm making eggs. Does anyone want eggs? And they just help each other and stuff more now than beginning. It was definitely like, they would have family meetings. Like her four older <laughs> girls were like, we're having a family meeting. And, oh, gosh. Just, and we're like, uh, the family meeting is all of us. Like we're right. all going to deal with this together. And it was really hard. Even the, the one that was 15 at the time, because, you know, 
she would try to get on her younger siblings if they were doing something they shouldn't. And I'm like, I'm the mom now. Like, you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And like, it took me like three times to honor that. And then all of a sudden it was like, she went, okay, like she's happy not to do that anymore. But for a while, I think that was her role. Right. And so just like refiguring out roles, even in yeah. the relationship with each other was a huge thing too. Yeah. We talk a lot on the podcast um, and we talk a lot in the movie about this, about how homeschooling really brings together relationships mm -hmm. within the family. Because when your kids are separated for 40 hours a week, you know, yeah. I mean, the kids, I mean, you probably know this number, but if a child is in school from kindergarten through 12th grade, through their whole childhood, they're away from their parents for over 1600 hours. Wow. I yeah. mean, that's a long time. And you think of all that lost time, not just with mom and dad who influenced them, but with their siblings yeah. and you can't, when they're building relationships with their friends at school and not that it's wrong to have relationships with friends, of mm -hmm. course, we, we need that. We need fellowship with other believers, but when they are missing that, that time with their siblings, it's really hard to build those relationships with your sibling if you're never with them. And yeah. then, like you said, you know, you, they go to school, they come home, they do homework, eat dinner, you get ready for bed and the day is done. And so you might get a few hours on the weekend mm -hmm. uh, with your siblings, but you know, I, I imagine that the relationships would not be nearly as strong as they are right. yeah. now if, if they were all going their own different ways in school. Right. Yeah. That's so, so, true. so talk about homeschooling. I, I want to know, so and I, I asked you this before the podcast, I said, so you've been homeschooling for how many years did you say? 20? Um, tw over 25. Yeah. Over 25 years. And I said, did you, do you feel now that after 25 years, do you have it all figured out <laughs> or do you feel like, okay, I'm still working, working through this and uh, trying to. Yeah. Get, I do get not it all have together. it figured out at all. Um, and I think with different seasons, it's different with different mm -hmm. kids. It's different. Our three youngest have dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, not prepared because so the middle girls were already, you know, elementary, junior high and high school. I taught my older three to read. Then they had already knew how to read because they were in school. Right. Although one of them had an IEP, um, and she is just like blossomed homeschooling. So I'll, I'll just put that in there, but then teaching the three younger one to read ones to read, it was like a struggle. I'm like, why? We've always done these phonogram cards. Like, why aren't you yeah. learning? And um, we found out they have eye tracking issues. Oh, okay. Two of them had to go to eye therapy because yeah. their eyes were like not tracking the mm -hmm. same. So it's like one is looking at this letter and one's looking at, one eye is looking at this yeah. letter. Like they're having problems. And then all three of them through speech therapy, which I had no idea that speech therapy covered reading, but their dyslexia, because it's not just, um, it's not just the, like, reading the words it's also processing and then mm -hmm. like my littlest guy who's nine now he would get his words switched up mm -hmm. um so ninja legos was ginger wagos and you know so he would all his words were kind of tweaked and that was a sign of dyslexia so i'm like all of a sudden having to learn okay how do i teach reading how do yeah. we do read out loud so two of the younger kids do great with read out louds like mm -hmm. they can listen because i'm reading to them they could follow the story they could tell me every detail one of them I'm like, it's like, I'm not even talking. So that isn't working. So even now, even though I've been homeschooling 25 years, yeah. I'm figuring out different, she needs small paragraphs mm -hmm. and answer questions as soon as that paragraph's done, like just even to process stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just figuring it all out yeah. um, with these kids. And I think it, it's a growing, it's a learning experience. I feel like I've learned so much. I've, I'm like, I have gotten an education just learning how to teach them in a way that works for them. Um, right. So it has been just a learning curve all the way through. Yeah. Which is encouraging because, you know, I, I feel like sometimes we, you know, I, I mean, we're in our ninth year of homeschooling now, but I remember early in my homeschool journey feeling like, okay, there's all these moms who have been doing this for, you know, mm -hmm. 10 plus years. They've got it all figured out. And now I'm there and I'm, and I mentioned this actually a little while ago on the podcast. I said, it's so funny because people will come to me because we're making a homeschool documentary and I have a homeschool podcast and we have a yeah. homeschool blog. <laughs> and so they'll ask me questions about homeschooling and like I could give, I, I mean, I have learned a lot, but you know, I can give people every reason why they should homeschool. But then when it comes to like actually being really successful and, and having your whole day figured out and this is what you should do, I'm like, don't ask me. I, I, yeah. I'm trying to figure it out myself. And, and I, I, there are some things I've learned that I love sharing with people, but, um, you know, overall, I just feel still, I feel like I'm totally inadequate, but God, 
Exactly. And this is, you know, what we were talking about earlier in the podcast, even with, you know, self-control and the fruit of the spirit and, and um, grumbling, all these things, we can't do this without mm-hmm. Holy Spirit. I mean, we need yeah. him and he yeah. fills in the gaps. I mean, we don't even have to worry about it. If we're just obedient to the call, he's going to do that. And the same with you, you know, with, with homeschooling or with adoption, um, you know, with marriage, with parenting, with everything, yeah. if this is what God's called you to do, just do yeah. it. And he's, and, and do your best. You yes. know, that doesn't mean just sit back and, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't yeah. do anything at all. But, um, but he is so faithful. And it has helped me having older kids um, that all went to college. (laughs) Like it all worked. You know what I mean? Because even Mm -hmm. when you have the kids, it's like, are they even going to be able to go to college? Are we ever going to be able to tackle this? Okay. This is a funny thing because um, my daughter, she was, her older brother was three years older than her. So he's 30, she's 27 now. And she'd always want to be doing what he was doing. So whatever Mm -hmm. science or history or whatever, she wanted to do that, but she struggled in math. My, all my kids, because we do like, we love reading books. I'm a writer. We would mm-hmm. write stories, you know, all these things. Yeah. So when she got to, she started college when she was 16. When she got there, she um, did the, like the placement test and like her English and writing, they were like 99 percentile. And her math, they're like, you need to do the pre-math class before you can even take the one that gets the credit. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like we've always like me yeah. teaching math and we've got, we've gotten tutors, but it has not been a strong suit for us. Yeah. Um, but she went to college. She did some prerequisites before she got to the ones that she actually got credit. She ended up getting her bachelor's when she was 20 wow. and was teaching at a university in Europe when she was 24. Um, so it's like, it but she probably out. wasn't teaching math, was she? She was not teaching math. She was <laughs> teaching writing and right. speech and um, editing. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? So I think even times when, cause I would like beat myself up, like we need to work on this. And yes, we, you know, for times for seasons, we'd hired people to come and help them with things. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was always a struggle, but she overcame, like she still did yeah. great in life. Um, she still jokes. She has to like sometimes count on her fingers or remember like, hey, what is six times three? Or, you know, right. It just takes a little bit more work, but she's a thriving yeah. adult who's doing well in society. Yeah. And so it kind of has helped me because, um, you know, I mean, I've never had a year where I fig- finished every page of every yeah. curriculum. You know, it's just like, it's like, they'll be okay if yeah. we focus on their hearts that love God, mm-hmm. their hearts that want to serve others their hearts that want to use the gifts that God has given them, like they'll be okay. And that, that kind of yeah. helped me like having older kids. Um, Cause right now, you know, like our curriculum, we're probably two weeks behind on where we should be, but I'm like, it'll be okay. Like we don't have yeah. to finish every page. It'll be fine. And it's given me a peace to know that and having older kids who I love them. I love hanging out with them. I love spending time with them. It's like, okay, this is the best way and it'll all work out. Yeah. Yeah. That's encouraging to me because I also do not like math and I'm <laughs> thankful for smartphones because if I did yeah. not have a calculator with me at all times, <laughs> yeah. I would be in big trouble. I don't tell my daughter that, you know, sometimes she'll, she'll be doing something in math and she's like, mom, when am I ever going to use this? And inside I'm like, you're not, <laughs> but I'm like, well, you know, you have to learn it because it's what yeah. teaching textbooks tells you to learn. <laughs> yeah. Although my third one is getting his computer science degree and he's like doing trig I mean he's doing all these crazy math classes that yeah a lot but he's still he's doing it like he's worked his way all the way up and so he's he's able to do it so he does he's having to do a lot of that math that he's gonna have to probably use in computer programs sure yeah totally and that's how God created him yep Um, exactly but um but yeah I uh, yeah I'm thankful for (laughs) (laughs) for people who understand and enjoy math and and uh because I'm not one who does. But anyway, that's okay. I do enjoy reading and I love reading to my girls and um, they would rather any day read a book or listen to an audio book mm-hmm, specifically mm-hmm. over doing anything having to do with numbers. So yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Um, that's great. Um, really quickly, I just want to ask you this because I'm so curious to know, and I don't know if you could even answer this. You've written over 70 books. Do you mm-hmm. have a favorite? Oh, that is... That is, a hard is, that an, is that like picking your favorite child? <laughs> it is. Okay. So, um, I think the, the one I usually go back to is, well, two kind of, I'm just going to mention two. My World War II novels are what kind of launched my book writing. Okay. Um, and they're, they're World War II fiction. So the first one's from Dust and Ashes. 
and the second one's Night Song um, because I wanted to be a writer and I'd been doing magazine articles as a young mom at home for parenting magazines and then I wanted to write novels but I was writing trying to write romances like sweet romances and they weren't getting anywhere and then I went on a trip with two friends um they were on a they're both researching for books in Europe and I'm like okay yeah I'll go with you my husband said I could go and as we were going we went through six countries in seven days and when we were in Austria we went to Mount Housen concentration camp and I heard about these American GIs ended up liberating the camp. They didn't even know it was there. And then freeing, you know, open the gates and Germans surrendered them because the Russians were coming. And then the first person in was a Nazi officer's wife who hadn't even known, I mean, had, hadn't had known it was there, but like as soon as she had the chance, went in and started caring and feeding for the prisoners. Wow. Like, that would make such an amazing novel. And I ended up interviewing over hundred veterans from that division, going to two of their reunions, um, some came and stayed at my house, like just became this like family, this with this oh, wow. veterans that, that no one had, I mean, written about their story before. No one had written about their liberation. I, I wrote it in fiction, but so, you know, it's based on true facts. Sure. And so that was the first one from Dash and Nashes. And then um, one of the men, he was a medic. He said, when the gates opened, um, there was an orchestra playing of prisoners. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I found out like so many Jews were well-known musicians that ended up in these camps. And they had a camp orchestra and their lives were saved because they were in this orchestra. Um, so that became my second book, Night Song. So, I mean, oh, I've wow. read a lot of books. I've interviewed a lot of people, but those guys, like all of them have passed away. You know, I started yeah. interviewing them in 2000, two, two, 2001. Okay. Um, just having that time, I'm like, I'm this homeschooling mom. And like, you've given me this opportunity to talk to these veterans, to share their story, like right in this time where they were wanting to tell their story before they passed away. I just feel like, it was God's gift to me. And so I love yeah. history. Um, I love the opportunity and I've written, you know, parenting and book. And so I love that because I love helping people and encouraging people. But that was, it's just like this super meaningful time that God just gave me this gift to know these men and to be able to write their stories. Yeah, that is so cool. And what a gift for them. And I'm sure their families mm-hmm. um, who probably have read your books um, yeah. as well. So that's awesome. Do you have, cause you have so many topics. I, I mean, aside from that, is there a topic that you prefer to write on that you, is it homeschooling, parenting, marriage? Um, I, I like all of it. It's so you? funny because yeah. if I'm writing like a parenting book, I'm like, this is so hard. I can't write to write fiction again. <laughs> I could just make stuff up. And then I'm in a novel and I'm like, this is so hard. I need like character arcs and dialogue. <laughs> so I mean, all of it is work. Yeah. Uh, I'm thankful that I can just do it all and that I've yeah. been because you know usually like you're a historical fiction author or you're a parenting author and right. the way this stuff works it's all worked out where I've just been able to write all these different books and and kind of my readers will kind of follow me <laughs> yeah. wherever I go which is really cool too. It's amazing God has yeah. really gifted you and and I love that so much uh, you know we're we're a family um you know my husband is a filmmaker and um we are very big on God has given everyone a gift and a Mm -hmm. talent to do something, every single person, whether or not you've discovered it, that's a different story, but God has gifted every single one of us in a specific way. And we are to use those gifts and talents for his glory and his Mm -hmm. glory alone. And we feel very strongly about that in regards to filmmaking. I had told you he had worked in the Hollywood film industry for many years And we knew that the Lord had gifted him in the area of film and technology and, and music. We used to have a recording studio and all that stuff. Like he's just really gifted that way, but he felt like he just wasn't using his gifts for God's glory. But, but the neat thing is, is that the Lord took what he used working in the the Hollywood industry and now he's being able to use it for God's glory. And, and that was all got part of God's perfect plan for him and for our family. Um, but there is just no greater joy than being able to use the abilities and talents that God has given to you to impact the lives of other people for God's kingdom and to point them to Jesus. Yeah. And, and so God does exceedingly more than what we ever ask for. Imagine I'll just tell you this because yes. you mentioned the film industry. So um, I was writing World War II and writing all these other books, parenting and an editor asked me if I wanted to write Amish, which if you go to my website, you'll see I've written uh-huh. Amish books. And I'm like, why would I want to write all my shit? I mean, <laughs> I like, like, I love simple life. I love, love cooking dinner for my family. I love big families. Like that makes sense. But I wasn't like naturally drawn. Well, mm-hmm. then I remembered that one of my daughters and another homeschool family used to be Amish. So I ended up hearing their story. It's an amazing story. 
that became one series which grew into more well that first series the big sky series um is actually in you know optioned in hollywood and there's a team there's i mean you would know their names if i told you their names okay they're working to try to produce this and i'm like i don't even know if it'll happen like that's totally up to god yeah but it's like god is took this thing that i thought okay why would i want to do this and he's like no i want you to tell these stories because there's a world out there that might listen to like this Amish yeah. family that would never pick up a Bible. Yeah. And then he brought, you know, producers and script writers and all these people around me. And I'm like, I am still a homeschooling mom. Like yes. I'm not in Hollywood trying to pitch us anything. And it's like, God just has yeah. done it. So yeah. like I said, I don't know if it'll happen, but it just goes to show like anything is possible with God. Yeah. And we just have to be faithful again, I get over and over. I'm like, I'm just homeschooling my kids and these opportunities come up. So God can do amazing things. Yes, yes, he can. And you also wrote the book for Mom's Night Out, right? Yeah. So they approached me about writing the novel to go with their movie. Okay. I'm like, okay, (laughs) sure. (laughs) I mean, I got to go on the red carpet. Oh, how fun. In Grauman's Chinese Theater. And I'm like, I was sitting um, next to like movie stars. Like uh, they were on the sides of me. And I'm like, okay, how does this even happen? Oh, how (laughs) fun. Did your family get to go with you? My husband went with me. Okay. So my husband, not, the kids didn't get to go, but my husband was able to go with me. So okay, yeah, that was super fun. Yeah, that's awesome. We we were just we were just in that area a few months ago. Um, I mean, that Southern California is home, so we were down in Hollywood and we went to see a movie there. And uh, I yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say this out loud, but I hate Hollywood. Um, yeah. It's just disgusting. I mean, it's it's. Uh, there are a lot of great, I don't mean Hollywood, uh, the industry. Well, right, there are exactly. many parts of that that I hate too. I mean, right, actually, exactly. like the streets of Hollywood, they're yeah. filthy. Yeah. Um, oh, and- I remember when we were there, we took our homeschooling kids. This is, I mean, even, <laughs> um, I don't even been there lately, but it's like, uh, don't look that way. Okay, yeah. don't look that way. Right. <laughs> it is. A lot. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting because people are always like, oh, Hollywood, that's so cool. I'm like, have you ever been there? Because <laughs> it's really dirty yeah. um, and it's really unsafe. Don't go there in the dark yeah. unless you're with, you know, someone who's much bigger and stronger than you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would never, ever, ever go there by myself in the dark. Yeah. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, yeah, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there, there, are, there are some great... Um, faith-based Christian mm-hmm. films that are mm-hmm. coming out of Hollywood now that we're, you know, and, and we're, that is really what we feel like God has called us to, mm-hmm. um, is to make Christian yeah. films to impact God's yeah. kingdom. And it can, and, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And we have resources to be able to do that now that, that people didn't have many years ago. And so it's a, it's an exciting time to be in this industry because it yes. is much needed. I mean, yes. Hollywood needs Jesus. So, (laughs) and the viewers all around the world. (laughs) Yes. As do uh, people who read books and novels, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of trash out there. And so, you know, I I love that people like you are willing to, um, to answer that call and do what God's called you to do to, to write books that, that bring him glory and encourage the heart. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for encouraging us. And, um, I hope that everyone will go pick up. So you guys are watching now because you're backstage cast members. You guys can see that's the the front of the book, The Grumble for a Year. And uh, so definitely pick that up and um, we'll link to it in the show notes. So thank you again, Trisha. You you are a blessing and it has been so much fun getting to talk to you. Thank you guys for watching. You are a blessing to us and we are so grateful for you. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you next time. Bye.